I watched the first two episodes of Son of a Critch and I absolutely adored it. Oh, cool. Um, yes. So Mark, I know you had, you work with uh, Tim on CBC already with this hour is 22 minutes. Uh, what was that journey of getting your story now turned into a show with him? Well, I had written the book and uh, my friend Tim McAuliffe, who'd written for The Office and Last Man on Earth and a million other things, he said, you know, we really need to make this a, a TV show. And at first I thought, oh, that's silly. But uh, no, he, he persisted. And so we got together and, and we wrote uh, uh, outlines and a uh, couple of scripts. And then we went off to Just for Laughs, actually, uh, and, and talked to a couple of different uh uh, networks in in, in Mon- there in Montreal to Just for Last Festival, and CBC were very interested. And before we knew it, we had it sold, and we we're off to the races. And um, it was fantastic because so much changes, you know, uh, uh, focused on different characters uh, than were in the book in some ways. As you're as you're transforming it into a television show, um, and uh, with that, there were, there were some characters that were alluded to, like Fox is kind of a mixture of a couple of people. Oh, and okay. The, yeah, so Fox was a mixture of, in the book, uh, Fox is a boy. And I changed it into a, a female, to a young girl, because there were these girls on my bus going to school, and, and they were very much uh, the same sort of a person, the same sort of stories. So I thought it was more interesting to tell that story as well. TV, more visual medium. It's like, okay, we can go this way now. This will be interesting. And uh, Pop, uh, Malcolm's character, is uh, my real grandfather died when my father was five years old. Would have been 95 years ago. And um, so, but we had lots of older folks who were older relatives in the home. So he's a mixture of those people. And and so it's interesting like that. And then my friend Richie Perez, who is mentioned in the book, but his name is never mentioned because I, you know, didn't want to tell tales too much. So I changed all the names in the book of kids. But I, I reached out. He was the uh, only person of color really at our school. He's a Filipino Canadian. And so I said, I want to tell some of your story. Uh, and, and I think it's important. And so he he jumped on board. So I was able to actually use Richie's real name <laughs> and he was a consultant on the show. Oh, so, so yeah, cool. it changes it in a lot of different ways, but, and then it becomes its own kind of tale and, and, and goes on and on and on. Yeah. I love that. I love the, the merging of reality and fiction. Yeah. Speaking of that with pop, I would imagine it is supremely uncomfortable to share a room with one's grandfather and or grandson, but uh, the two of you make it seem fun. And I love that Mark seems to actually respect pop. Can you talk about, how you view each other, uh, if you want to start Benjamin, and then you can add on Malcolm. Um, well, I think um, Mark hasn't been around kids most of his life, so his his only like um, way of escapism is with his grandfather or his dad or his brother or his mom. But um, yeah, so his he he was naturally born into those older generation or pop culture, so that's probably why he gets on along so well. And I think because they they've been um, together in in the same room for a while, you can see like there's just a natural chemistry, and that was so cool to to see and work with with Malcolm. It was great. Definitely, Malcolm. Well, they obviously have been primed here to say things like that, which I quite agree with. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, You're like lies. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, yeah, they were my favorite scenes, no doubt about it, because the, the sort of um, the heart of my character is really that, you know, is, mm. he's the sort of um, God help him, giving this boy this sort of guidance in life, you know, and, and uh, life lessons through his pop. God help him, you know, but um, the great thing about pop is that he just goes for life. He goes for it. And that is a very infectious thing for a kid, you know. It's a really, that's a great thing for a kid to be around because they'll always do that in their lives. You know, just go for it. And um, that's a lot of fun to do. So we have a lot of fun actually doing that. And, um yeah. Yeah, I feel like Pop helps uh, Mark rationalize the world as he's going through. He always has Pop to go, you know, no, carry on, carry on, you know. <laughs> like whether it is, you know, sometimes bumpy and, you know. And but, what do you think of his advice? Well, Pretty good, isn't it? Pretty <laughs> damn good. That's, 
it's amazing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say the advice isn't always the soundest, but it is um, the most fun. So there is that. Uh, yeah. Now, Mark, for you, what is it like to become your own father? Well, it, it was uh, a bit strange at first and something that I, I worried would uh, kind of take people out of it a little bit or be a distraction. But once once playing the role, you know, I, I was delighted to be able to do it, to act alongside uh, this wonderful cast. But um, there are there were moments where, as I said, you know, uh, uh, you know, when I'm dressed in the, my dad's clothing and. Uh, wearing the same patch on my work blazer for the radio station that that he wore from his actual jacket and stuff. Um, it could be quite odd. You know, every now and then I'd be in a scene, I'd be acting, and I'd look down. And from here down, I'm kind of basically just seeing my father. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, you know, the house is very similar. So out of the corner of my eye, like the dining room set, is exactly like my house. And some of their actual furniture is in there, too. So I'd be kind of like, over here is Malcolm McDowell. I'm in a scene. But over here is my actual childhood, <laughs> like the corner of my arm and dad's chair and stuff. I'd be like, what the heck is happening? So uh, it it was wonderful that way. And at times, you know, to be honest, I, I would get, you know, a, a little melancholy and stuff, you know, wondering what they thought of it all and, uh, and wishing they could be here to see all of this. But uh, there's something wonderful about uh, sharing that story and and then hearing the laughter on set, you know, and hearing such such of a hearing like these two having such a great time and thinking, well, what a wonderful thing, even if nothing else, just the friendships formed and to see this 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 really great working environment we had, um, I, I think is is a wonderful uh, honor uh, to their memory and, and a great way of, of, of bringing their life forward. Oh, definitely. And I also thought that you did a fabulous job playing your dad because oh, I looked you. at a photo, not that I, I don't, I don't know him, but I look, I knew that you were playing him and I looked at the photo, I looked at, you know, the scene and then I was looking at the photo of you and I was like, is that him? Am I wrong? Is he not playing his dad? But oh, <laughs> yeah, so it worked. There you it, worked. Go. it worked, I thought. Excellent. Um, <laughs> ben, you are playing Mark, of course, or at least Mark's memories of himself. Uh, is that nerve wracking? Do you have to look to him for advice or ignore his existence in order to properly portray him? Well, um, he's he's insisted that it isn't like um, a carbon copy and he's been really good with it. Like um, I've had the artistic license to be able to create it more of my own Mark Rich, um, which is really cool. And um, I thank him for that. And I feel like th it isn't so much nerves, but, you know, I feel like. Um, obviously being having a lot of work to do or doing a lot of you know being on set quite a lot you you naturally have nerves so I don't think it's nerves towards being the perfect Mark Critch I just feel like naturally you know it's like being on all the time yeah I yeah thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> I just sorry so it was good I remember it was, it was... one time I remember one time I was I was watching uh, you, you were you walk or you'll stand with your hands behind your back at different points, and I was like watching, and I think my wife said, "Oh wow, look, he's doing he's doing what you do." And I said, "What?" And I said, "Yeah, you walk with your hands behind your back sometimes." And I was like, "No, I don't." And she said, "Yes, you do." And I looked, and like my hands were on my back. And then one time you had this kind of like this funny little run. Uh, and I was like, you know, oh, that's a funny little run. And you're kind of like, well, yeah, sort of the way you run. I'm like, it is. What? Oh, no. So every now and then there's a couple of little things he was doing that were similar to me, which are it, it's, in, it's it's fascinating as a you to go like I run like that. Oh my God, no! Is, is there so, <laughs> I should get that checked. Right. Yeah, but you Ben learn, was amazing. You learn about yourself while yeah. you are watching another version of yourself. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, Malcolm, you mentioned. Um, Pop's zest for life, which is obviously great, but there's also like a respect for, or like an imbuing of a respect for death that he gives. Um, Mark, can you talk about that aspect of it? Like in episode two, when you go to the funeral? Well, you know, he loves a good wake because it's free sandwiches and uh, free tea and coffee, which of course Pop loves. Who wouldn't love a good wake? I mean, the problem is that the same sandwiches for a wedding or a funeral. 
<laughs> they're all made by the Legion, apparently. And um, I love that aspect. I mean, only Mark Critch should come up with this stuff, you know. I mean, what a family. Let's face it, they're all really a load of sickos. Let's face it, if you really want to go into it. <laughs> I mean, they could spend years in um, therapy for this. But... Um, <laughs> Actually, this is perfect therapy for Mark is just to put it all out there, you know. I think he's wonderful as his dad, but, you know, I think he started off um, with his dad in his mind, but uh, as we went on, he got comfortable in the part. He was playing, you know, uh, something more than just his father. And um, it was really nice to see that because, you know, he, you don't really want an imitation and and you know he didn't do that and so uh, you know he really i don't even know he probably didn't even think about it that much because but but it just so evolved which was great to see and yeah. you know um of course i couldn't do any um, research on my character because it was actually a his grandmother and the, the neighbor or something. I don't know. <laughs> if there was a neighbor, they must have had to trek a long way because the house was isolated, you know. Mm. That's so cool to, to learn all those bits and pieces of his life, even when it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio, though. You know, you're not making a biopic on anyone. And uh, Mark is the first person to say, hey, who cares? Let's fly with it. Mm -hmm. um, go with whatever, you know, it, it, and, and um, I think that's important because you don't want to get stuck in um, with any boundaries at all. And the best thing you could ever do for a character is to bring in your own imagination. And that's really important. I think, you know, all the actors, all of us did that, you know, um, and uh, also uh, Colton too. He was fantastic. Who plays the, um, you know, the other brother? He's a lovely actor, really lovely actor. And so we're very lucky to have him. I think. In fact, it's everybody, neat. you know. Yeah. It's neat to see, like, talking about actors bringing their own stuff and feeling comfortable to, to do things. There's one scene where Benjamin and Pop are in bed side by side, and Pop has kind of gone off his meds, and he's not feeling that great. And he's oh, yeah. sort of meant to sort of babble and have this little thing where he's kind of uh, not really quite making sense. And then Malcolm just went in this other way. And he, he, he gave this, he did the, the speech as written and then continued with this beautiful speech about this bombing run during the Second World War and all this stuff. And he had just gone off and everybody, he just left it go. But it was, it was stunning. And it was an incredible piece of acting. And, and the second they he waited for him to finish and they said, cut. And the whole crew erupted in applause. And I was thinking, you know, well, that's one of the coolest things I'll ever see in my life. Right there. It's Malcolm McDowell in full flight. And there's a couple of times where, um, you know, Malcolm might go, you know, and, and go, I'd like to go try this. It's like, OK, yeah, whatever. And at one point, they, they're having a quite emotional scene and a little bit of tears came from Malcolm. And and once again, the, the crew erupts in, in, in applause because it's it's when you have actors like Benjamin and Malcolm. And you can't, you don't want to rein them in or handcuff them. It's like whatever their instinct is, let that happen. My God, you know, you'd be a fool not to. And so we're so lucky that that they're willing to to go that extra mile and feel comfortable enough and safe enough to to, uh, to take chances every now and then because it, it it's just the most remarkable bits of performance I've, I've ever had a seat for. I love that. Yeah, um, Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Now, you obviously spend a lot of time with the elders of your family, but you do get to finally make friends when you go to school. And Fox and Richie, as you've already discussed, um, were very fun additions to the show or, you know, fleshing out in the show. What was it like for you to get to know these actors and, you know, form that trio on screen? Yeah, it was it was so cool. They're, they're both amazing people and I've stayed in touch with them. And that's great. Uh, I can't wait to see them again. If I do see them again, I really hope I do. Um, you know, it it's really interesting because 
all 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 the all of them have characteristics like Mark is like bubbly and he's amazing and he's you know he's really friendly and, and so Sophia and we have like this yeah on set it's it's the same as on state on on screen so it's yeah it's really cool. No, oh, I love that. Now, um, you know, hopefully there will be a second season of the show. And if there is, Malcolm, given that we have learned you are able to carry the character forward and it doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily exist as one person, what would you like to learn about Pop in season two or what would you like to explore about his character? I see this character going um, in any which way that's in Mark's imagination. This character really could do anything. He could fall in love. He could... I think what we're going to um, look at a little bit is our relationship between father and son. And I think um, that that you know, it tends to be a bit like this, or it's not even like this. It's a bit like this. It's like... Ah, that's a great way of saying it. <laughs> and... Uh, of course, you, you know, from Pop's point of view, you have unconditional love for your children and your grandchildren, of course. Um, it just, it, it's just a little out of kilter um, in the first season. And so that would be a great thing to explore. And, um, you know, also, I'd like to see a little more of uh, St. John's. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see a little more of Newfoundland. Because um, it's such a cool place. It's, um, <clears throat> you know, it is like sort of being in Ireland or Scotland in the 50s. And I say that, or it's like being in Liverpool, you know, because Liverpool is, a, a, you know, this small city that's sort of isolated. Nobody ever goes through Liverpool. You go through <laughs> Manchester. You don't go through Liverpool. You have to go there. It has to be a trip. And so there's a great sense of community, great, you know, you make your own entertainment. That's exactly what they do in St. John's in Newfoundland. You have to, and the humor is fantastic because, you know, it's got to be. You've got to be sardonic and uh, a little bit, you know, because of your lot. And, and of course... You know, uh, I find it very similar, actually, to Liverpool in a weird way. And it was only when I came away and had a bit of distance on it that I really felt, oh, my God, yes, that's why I feel so at home, you know? Yeah, that sounds amazing. I really hope that we get to see more of that, like you just said. And I cannot wait to see more of the father-son relationship that you described in season one. So thank you guys so much. I am very much looking forward to the show. And I hope you guys have a good day. <laughs>